Jake has a question. Jake! He says, should each step of the foo be hyper-focused? For example, can you split your money between steps four and five, or should you just hyper-focus on four and then hyper-focus on five? Is there ever a time where you're kind of like in between the steps? What do you think? Um, uh, uh, yes, yes, but you have to know which steps it's okay to hyper-focus on, and this is what I mean. Uh, step four, fully funded emergency reserves. It's not uncommon for some of us to have emergencies happen. And so we have to tap into that. By the way, you want to show them the thing, Brian? Oh, you hold it up? Yeah, if you, you don't know what we're talking about. Even my audio listeners have told me they get it now. They uh, get it. They, when they hear that, when they hear the, 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 the sound effect, they know that I'm talking about the financial order. Of so you can go to moneyguide.com slash resources, download your free deliverable. It's step four is a fully funded emergency fund. Well, it's not uncommon. Emergencies happen, and we have to go dip into that. And so one of the things we naturally have to do is begin to build that back up. Well, the question is, okay, do I put all of my other, you know, steps five, step six, step seven on hold in order to fully build that emergency fund? And it may depend. If you are someone who needs six months of an emergency fund and now you've come down to four and a half months, perhaps it's okay if you do them in tandem. You build back up your emergency reserve while you're still doing step five and while you're still doing step six. So I would argue that is an okay split step. However, if you're someone who's in step five, right, and you're focused on that tax-free bucket, and you have those Roth assets, and you have those HSA assets, I am of the opinion that makes us to hyper-focus. Like, those dollars are so, so, so valuable. We really want to see you max out step five before you start going to step six to start maxing out the employer-sponsored retirement plan. If you have high interest debt, if you have debt that's up there, 17, 18, 19, 20%, that you're paying on credit cards, ah, oh, you got you got to get that stuff gone. You got to get rid of that. So that's like a hyper focused step. So I would argue, Brian, you have to know which step you're on and which ones uh, warrant hyper focus versus which ones provide a little bit of latitude. Well, I mean, it, it, look, you and I, we don't really disagree, but we just have. Oh, here I we mean, go. No, but I, I, I want to clarify because I, I think we're Jake. You know, and, and look, the, like it's, I talked about. I think a few weeks ago, we have Jake, 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 because we have lots of Jakes that love the Q&A show. So I'm not sure which Jake we're talking to, but we have a lot of Jakes that are in there hanging out with us all the time. And I think he's got you a little bit because he used the word hyperfocus. Mm-hmm. And that makes you think that you got to be, you got to have all your senses engaged on thinking about this. And, 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 and that puts you, that's the point where I think the energy is being drawn to the words hyperfocus. Whereas I would encourage you, when you're thinking about the financial order of operations, I'll do it a little more elegantly. Mm. I'll put a little wave into it. Mm. But but it, it's one of those things where it is designed where it's a graduation point. Mm-hmm. Where you, you look at step one, deductibles covered. You got to get the, you know, your your whatever your highest deductible is, you get to that. Once you get to that, now let's move to getting that free money from your employer. After you get the free money, it's crazy to keep funding your 401k beyond the free money from your employer because that's a 50% to 100% guaranteed rate of return but we got to make sure we get to step three and pay off the credit card that's probably charging you 25 percent you're not making 25 percent on your money except for the free money from your employer so we got to graduate from that to get to step four now you do bring up a great point and and i think it's great that you, you you focused in on step four emergency reserves I wouldn't want anybody to go beyond step four until they get to like at least three months. But I sure. think there is some yeah. gray zone for once you go from three to six months. And you're because I, I do that with my own personal life too. Is that I, I will say I, I, I'm feeling a little uncertainty in the world right now. I'm going to make sure that I, I get a little extra cash saved up. I think you could have some some seepage between four and five because you've already checked the box on four, but you you have some gray zone on if you're going to go expand that beyond three months. Now you're going to six months or whatever. But these are set up to be graduation points. Um, My biggest thing is that when I was designing the financial order of operations to make sure that you're thinking about your wealth building process, how much of this can you automate it uh, automate it to make it automatic wealth creation? And that's kind of why I wanted you to compartmentalize and think through those things. I think it's great to to think about hyper focus, but I worry about the sustainability of hyper focus. I think if I was like if I'm in credit card debt 
yeah, I want you to be hyper focused. Mm-hmm. But the other stuff, I want you to feel like it's a process, it's a system, because hyper focus gives me stress. It gives me makes me feel like chaos. And I'm telling you, the financial order of operations is the exact opposite of chaos. This is supposed to flow like water, and because it flows like water, you know, you don't have to be so stressed out about it like a hyper focus moment would be. You can just set it for, and forget it and create your wealth and you will be better for it.